normally allowed to come up this close and I see all these people around me, everybody's so touched and I myself, I'm so touched that I can be here right now. This is, this is a place that's so special to so many people. This vlog is the story of a whole culture, of a history. Let me take you on the ultimate road trip of Sindh. What do you think this is exactly? I mean, it looks like an ornate palace of some kind, right? But it's not. This is actually a place that I've been meaning to visit for ages, having seen it on Instagram and on YouTube and on Facebook, shared by everybody apart from me. But I'm finally here, and this is no palace. Although you could be excused for mistaking it for that. This is a graveyard, one of the biggest in the world, and it's called Makli Necropolis. It's home to almost a million graves. Can you believe that? And it spans like three, four hundred years. This is just an amazing place to be in. these beautiful graves you'll notice that it's not just the shrines from the outside that are decorated but these each individual grave here I mean look at this beautiful calligraphy then you've got patterns here individual decorations and symbols this is just unbelievably beautiful and ornate I'm just wondering how long does it take to create a single grave like this probably like a decade I was stunned by everything I saw at Makli Necropolis, but we had to keep on moving north, towards Ranikot Fort. The sun has just risen here above the fort. We arrived just in time and it's so cold, I'm shivering. But I want to see how this place looks from the top. Guys, I want to show you something. Come have a look. The fascinating thing about Ranikot Fort is that nobody really knows its history or origins. And yet, one of the world's largest forts towers here above the landscape of Sindh. the kind of view that justifies getting up at 4 a.m. only to get here at sunrise when the first rays of daylight begin to hit this beautiful structure and lend it that incredible celestial light. This is the true beauty of the union between a man-made construction and nature and there's nobody else here just me and my camera and my crew somewhere in the distance. I've run away from them. <laughs> All road trips have one thing in common. You just have to keep on moving from one destination to the next. All right, let's keep going. But one thing that remained constant was Jazz Super 4G, which enabled me to upload and share my entire journey with my social media audience.
It's so hard for me to process that we are actually here in the shrine of Lal Shabazz calendar here in Seven Sharif. You know, apparently this place is visited by about a million people every year and now I am one of those people. The shrine of Lal Shabazz calendar was built in the 14th century, but still today it continues to be one of the most important Sufi shrines in the world. I could hardly believe it when I was invited to see the tomb of the saint himself and offer my blessings. I feel so lucky right now at the heart of the shrine. That I see all these people around me, everybody's so touched and I myself, I'm so touched that I can be here right now. This is, this is a place that's so special to so many people. Anyone who's been to Seven Sharif will tell you this place has a magnetic pull, a spirituality, and a significance of its own. It was hard to leave it behind. As we continued our journey, we found a very different kind of oasis. I'm never going to guess where I have just found myself. This was not actually a destination that we were even meant to include in this vlog, yet here I am, and I am in probably one of the most incredible places I've ever seen in my life. It's right here in Sindh, and it's called Manchar Lake. This lake, one of the largest in Asia, is home to the Mohana tribe, a community of fishermen who have always lived on the water. I really meant what I said, a whole family of five live here right on this boat 24-7. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding a baby that lives on a boat, in the boat, in the middle of the lake. This is a little Mohana baby. They don't come on land, they don't have a house on land. This is their house. This is where they sleep, this space. That is where they eat. There's a little stove there. That's their kitchen. And the small roof over their heads. And this is where they live and work and spend their time as a family in the middle of an infinite lake. I'm just so amazed at where this road trip has taken me and I'm just I don't know what I'll find next but Sindh you are unbelievable Sindh you are beautiful Sindh you are so rich in people and history and culture this is looking like one of my best trips ever I'm so happy I'm here and on to our next destination that not many people outside of this region know about. Let me show you. Oh, 
Our trip to Sekar and Rori started with the Satin Dorastan, also known as the Seven Sisters Graveyard. Legend has it that the seven sisters who are buried here died protecting their honor and their modesty from prying eyes. Finally here, we finally arrived in our final destination on this incredible and very eventful road trip of Sin. So we now just have one more tiny jump across the river Indus in that boat and we'll make it to Satbel Island right here in Sakar. So as they say in Sindhi, San, hello? <laughs> the Hindu temple right here on this island was built in the early 19th century. And still today, it is considered to be one of the most important Hindu sites in the world. Every year, it continues to attract pilgrims from as far as India and Nepal. So I see already there's a lot of Hindu heritage here, a lot of Hindu history. You know, this beautiful temple, gate, decorations that actually remind you of, of things that you find in India. Go and check it out. Throughout my entire journey in Sindh, but most specifically right here on Sadbello Island, I noticed so many signs of Sindh's famous interfaith harmony. Right here in this temple, representations of Guru Nanak, of Hindu deities, and even of Jule Lal, who is considered to be one of the most prominent Sufi mystics all of them existing side by side. That's Sindh, diverse, spiritual, in places magical and filled with so many stories. Stories that not many of us know out here in this world. But that's, that's sin. Understated, but majestic in that beautiful, mysterious elegance. I think this is a place that needs a lot more than just a few days for you to truly understand, truly comprehend and to truly get under the skin of everything that is part of Sindh. So here's to many more returns. And so I wrap up episode 8 of Ava Travels Pakistan with Jazz, following an incredible journey in Balochistan and Sindh. And let's see, maybe this isn't a goodbye just yet.